Greetings, dear ones, and happy Friday, December 4th. It is so difficult to believe it's already December um, and moving so quickly. And we always know that normally Friday, I mean, December's move very, very quickly. But today, I think that we are dealing with a whole different um, choice of time frames, time lines, time frames, time lines. And that's what is very present and up this week is a question of time. And um, not, only a, not only time, but time loops. And if any of you are fans of um, time travel movies, you know that there are certain rules to time travel, but that there is also the possibility of time loops. Um, there is a, an interesting movie that um, Tom Cruise made and it's very military, it's rather violent, but fascinating as far as a time loop and the possibility of learning from a particular situation and being able to gather information each time you go through the loop to be able to then solve a, a challenge. In that case, I think it was uh, aliens coming onto our planet, but there have been many other movies where um, the idea of resolving something can happen. And that's really where we are right now. Um, we have the potential with this evolutionary leap to cease repeating patterns of the past and be able to go forward with uh, completely new patterns in our lives, um, both individually and collectively. And um, it was very, very interesting that I came across so many movies, articles, situations where time and the repetition of time um, or the repetition of patterns rather uh, was very, very apparent. As many of you know, for a wide variety of reasons, my guides and people happen to work very um, clearly through Star Trek, both the original series and the next generation. And as I am um, picking up information, receiving information every week, um, oftentimes when I pop on a television show, something that I can have on in the background while I'm doing something else, whether it's in regard to the house or something on the computer, I will put on Star Trek because it is like an old familiar album. I know the stories, I know what goes on. But interestingly enough, like many, um, what I would consider live books where you can simply ask, what do I need to know? You open up the book and it is always right on target. Um, I have referred so many clients to the work of Jamie Sams, the animal medicine cards, because the animals are always, always on target. Um, another fabulous reference book from the beyond is Living the Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes. He always um, brought that particular philo philosophy forward with an open at the top idea that it can constantly change and um, adjust and accommodate to the current day, whether it's in uh, institutions or businesses or whether it's in one's personal life. The information does evolve and applies itself 
in an ever deeper way. In other words, um, and, and so too, you know, great books, the Bible, Khalil Gibran, these are books that are forever alive and forever accessible in the current time. It's very, um, it's very depth allows for the reading again and again and again and gleaning one more piece of information that you, no matter how many times you've read it, you thought you knew, but with your growth, so too comes the growth of the material, the philosophy, the book, the movie, the, in this case, television show. And as I said, I usually have it on in the background while I'm doing something, but occasionally the subject matter will be so pertinent to the current collective consciousness theme that I do pay more attention, stop what I'm doing and really listen to the words, listen to the script, listen to the scientific theories or the scientific um, solution that they come up with. Many of these things have moved very, very definitely, very evidently from science fiction to science fact. And many theorists, even back in the day, which the original series was in the 60s, the uh, next generation was in the 90s, early 90s, um, that information, you know, the theoretical physics, the theoretical quantum um, mechanics were there, but certainly not in not only the um, public awareness, but it was not even really widely known or by any means accepted by the physicists of the day. Now, however, things have very much changed. We are constantly on new frontiers, new boundaries, stretching our cosmology um, and the information that we have of not only our galaxy, but the universe. Two days ago, um, one of my science journals that I align with and read uh, put out a, an article that I think the number was 30 billion more stars were mapped in our galaxy. So as the information about the universe gets wider, so too does our neighboring information get more clear. And as a result, our galaxy <laughs> virtually gets smaller because of the ability to um, have more facts and figures as our technology grows. So what was, what even there, what once took so long to not only receive as far as the um, detection technology, but also in the processing of that information. All of that has sped up um, on a quantum level um, as far as science's ability to understand many things. Now, time is one of those that it, that is still very elusive um, still very much in theory, and yet scientists are aware of what's referred to, of course, as fractal time. Fractal time meaning the never-ending patterns, a continuous rhythm of patterns over and over and over again. Um, there is the there are actually laws of a fractal model. And that patterning is seen also in human existence. Um, we have seen over and over again through paleontology, geology, how different cycles of the earth have certainly cycles, patterns of the earth have certainly repeated. 
right now some say we are in the midst midst of some say we are um, on the cusp of the sixth great mass extinction and those of you who are connected to any of the um, wildlife and preservation and um, ecology sources are aware that we are losing species right and left of animals, plants, insects, and birds. This week, very in the news are the um, millions and millions and millions of birds that have um, died. We had several months ago a mass die off here in the United States and I believe in other countries without any knowing why. Um, there are many that bring forth the theory that there are certain um, sonar and uh, vibrational experiments that are going on that are throwing off the um, navigation of birds that are actually so high the frequency that it is killing them. Whatever the case, we are very much aware this week. Um, I don't know if it's been on the um, more popular news or it's just been in the science community that we have lost millions of birds. And to you know, in this case, unknown sources. We lost millions and millions of minks this week that were in farms in um, different countries that were culled, C-U-L-L-E-D, or in other words, killed, because there was transmission of COVID to the mink, um, population in the farms and there was a, um, a mutation of COVID and the fear of it being transmitted back to humans um, caused the decision to kill millions, literally millions of mink um, it is being seen in our country. It is starting to be um, uncontainable also as far as COVID. And so the farms here are beginning to kill off their um, make. So that's a man-made situation, but we're seeing in the lack of biodiversity and the elimination of uh, ecosystems and you know the encroachment of man into the wild places which most scientists are attributing to the ability of COVID to pass from the animal kingdom into our world. So things are happening very very rapidly and yet at the same time we can feel the um, extension of time that so much is taking so long. Um, certainly, it seems like that in our human expansion of knowledge and growth in regard to um, our connection to the earth, as well as um, how we can work together and maintain the diversity of all different groups and all different countries. But in fact, it is, it is adjusting. We are adjusting much more radically faster, as a matter of fact, than at any time previously in our history. So although it looks as if the wheels are moving very, very slowly, 
it is this chaos, it is this bringing to the surface that's allowing for the rapidity of um, change and choices to change coming to the surface. Um, just checking my notes. So we are actually laying the foundations now for how we want our future to be whether that's personally or planetarily. We have the ability to, <laughs> the, the um, particular Oracle card that I chose this morning um, was rewrite the past. And while we can't always uh, go to that depth, we can be aware of our memories and be able to react differently to be able to come to a cognitive awareness of why we're why we're responding in the way that we're responding or reacting better said in the way that we're reacting and be able to adjust our behavior and that's the first level of change but it is truly in feeling the emotions surrounding what occurred in the past that enable us to go deeper and to really feel into our bodies and our energy fields, learning how to um, recognize patterns when um, someone that is in our work environment or someone in our family is triggering us or someone we don't even know is triggering us to be able to acknowledge and feel into that pattern, maybe not in the moment, but at a later point and really follow it back and experience or, or learn how that pattern presented itself in our younger years, in our childhood years. Now that leads us, that's the type of work I do in some sessions. And in other sessions, for those that are doing a bit more of the advanced work, we take those feelings and go even deeper, allowing the body and energy field and the wider self and guides and teachers and masters to bring forth little clues and bites of information that allow us to take that time spiral deeper. And from my training, et cetera, we actually bend time and are able to revisit that part of your system that was um, wounded, traumatized, and the moment when that got fixated into your system. And usually the pattern occurred over and over and over again until such time as it became set and literally is being held in the body and in the energy field. And when that pattern at that level is able to be accessed, the energetics come in, your system goes to work, your energy field, all of your people, and literally that pattern is changed down to potentially a genetic level and in that way you are actually changing the pattern throughout time both time in the past and time in the future in the future because that pattern is now out of your family lineage um, it is now changed in regard to your culture both the current culture you live in and those that you're connected to through both parents and potentially even changed in human nature thus changing the species so that's the potential but again that's working with time you cannot do that through your brain it has to be done on other levels of your system and that's why we are going through such a such an intensity of experience on both the national stage and global stage compelling the 
necessity compelling us to look at those patterns in history, whether it's throughout history as far as racism, whether it's throughout history in regard to certain aspects of human nature in, of dominance and control or the uh, primal anger and the um, sexual distortions and utilizing that for uh, controlling. So, and unfortunately these first and second level or chakra corresponding um, psycho-emotional and physio-energetic pieces are still here on our planet. We still have horrific things going on in other countries. Um, again, uh, this week, a, um, a baby, uh, what is it called, a ring of um, extorting money for people to have babies born here that was broken up by um i believe it was the state police along with the fbi in new york state of new york so many things that are primitive and primal and no longer have a place in an evolved society or an evolved planet and those are the patterns so we can actually rewrite the past as I mentioned earlier, at different levels and rewrite our past as a species. We no longer have to live from the perspective of um, whoever has the most toys wins. Um, the stronger can conquer the weak. Um, that has been done, it has been explored. We are now in a potential to change the past, to break those loops that we have been experiencing for thousands of years. Not because we were stuck in them, but simply because as each time they repeated, there was a growth that went along with it. <laughs> may not seem like that in history and it may not seem like we've learned anything um, as they are still occurring even now, but um, those behaviors and choices and perspectives. But in fact, we are, we are growing, we are learning. And as each person individually breaks those patterns, is able to um, materially change physically, emotionally, energetically, not just mentally, because that will cause loops. You will find yourself constantly chasing that uh, or needing to chase that behavior modification until such time as you are able to feel in deeper and usually with help, um, be able to um, see it in a different light because it comes more to the surface. Um, what else did I want to mention? There is, again, this presentation from a wide variety of sources that come in when there's a theme and the theme this week as i've said is time and um, time loops and one of the movies that i stumbled onto i've seen before but um, there's a lot of wonderful time theory of course being spoken of uh, in the movie, Dr. Strange, the Marvel movie, Dr. Strange. And I was struck by um, what the ancient one uh, was saying to Dr. Strange as he was beginning to learn that this reality um, is not the only one. And she says to him that there are realities beyond the five senses. He was very, very attached to his life here in the 3D 
as a surgeon into his arrogance and um, assumption of great knowledge. And she says that at the root of existence, mind and matter meet, thoughts shape reality. And she reminds him that this, or tells him, this is just one of countless universes. And we are really in the time of speaking scientifically and otherwise of multiverses. But we have to live in this universe, in this dualistic universe that we've chosen to explore. And from all the information that I've received for many, many years, both from um, my Council of Ancients, who are universal beings that are um, watching, overseeing the progress or the um, change or the evolution of this universe. But from, again, wide range of sources, both scientific and metaphysical, that we have to come to an awareness that we have the ability to change our reality. We have the ability to shape our reality. We have the ability to redesign our reality. And that means how we relate to the earth, to nature and to one another. Because if we don't, um, we are going to be part of that sixth dis dis extinction, mass extinction. We cannot continue to live in this um, disconnect from the earth and nature and the cycles and circles of life that are here. So to that end, um, I am going to be conducting ceremony on the solstice, which is the 21st of December. It is going to be an, a ceremony and a process, virtually of course, where each person can create their own ceremony. I will direct you to the materials that you need to gather, or um, if you don't have access to them, I will have packets for people to pick up. And, um, we will be working with, of course, the solstice represents um, the deathing of things and the rebirth. Um, in this particular instance, the ceasing of the darkness, because through this time, we go into a darker, as you know here, particularly on the East Coast, days become shorter and shorter, darkness comes in earlier and earlier until the solstice, at which point it starts to change and extend the light of the day, the lighted hours, by one minute, and then grows. So um, the theme for this year is reflections on light and dark. And we will be working with the illumination of and revealing the dark or illumination of the dark to reveal new patterning in you. And um, again, this is going to be a very profound ceremony because this has been a year, of course, unlike any other, but it has been the beginning of our evolutionary process, this evolutionary leap that is very, very accelerated. So it is time to remember who you are, to reveal what it is that you're doing here on this planet at this point in time, because it was very, very purposeful. And you are here for your soul's benefit, but as an added benefit to the whole, your process, affects the evolution of the species and the planet. 
So that is a lot of information, but I also know that throughout that, um, there have been coming in as I've been speaking, many of the energetics that are cooperating with us at this point in time. Um, not only the masters of time, but those who represent fractal time, that repetition of patterns allowing for an increase of knowledge and expansion. And very definitely both the bird population, which are always considered in most indigenous cultures, the messengers. So <clears throat> they are trying to tell us something by their living and deathing. So hopefully we can gather that information and learn from it so that their deaths need not be purposeless. Also very aware, as I said, of the mink population. Perhaps that is to teach us, again, the way of farming and accessing our food, our clothing in a more humane way, in a more respectful way. And of course, we do have universal energetics here this week. Expanding our awareness. Of the vastness. The potential vastness of multiverses. So I invite you to just settle on to your sits bones and allow your shoulder blades to just kind of slide down and towards one another. If you are sitting on your sits bones and you do so with your shoulder blades, you'll find that you are able to sit up a little bit straighter, enabling your chest to open up and to come forward, allowing that profound and complex heart of yours to be present. Also allowing for energy to run up and down the spine more fluidly. And simply allowing your breath in whatever way, whatever rhythm, whatever, however deep, however shallow, to just be nothing you need do on the contrary doing is not conducive to this process so perhaps you have been taught various methods of meditation this is a little bit different for most teach you to use your third eye and try to quiet the mind to go out 
to a different reality. In this particular process, I am inviting you to allow yourself to go down and into your inner universe or innerverse. And oftentimes I invite my clients or those in groups to say to themselves or out loud, I am asking and I am allowing my body. I am asking and I am allowing my energy field. I am asking and I am allowing my wider self. I am asking and I am allowing my guides, teachers, masters. I am asking and I am allowing all parts of me. I am asking and I am allowing all times of me. But whether that's referring to different times during this life or different times from other existences. In any case, you are inviting all of this you, all of these yous, to help you come down and inside of you, wherein lies all information that you may need, wherein lies all answers. your answers. For it enables you to be much closer to and in touch with and connected to your innate information, the information coming to you from your soul self through your energy field through your body. And not generally through the mind, for the mind is much more limited than these other aspects of you. So now you may notice that there is more space. Okay, so those of you who are familiar with synchronicity and how the universe responds immediately to you, I was told to look over at the screen. I have soundscapes on for the background music. And the song that's playing right now is called Ever After. And it comes from an album entitled The Sands of Time. Now, if that did not give you God bumps, to realize, <clears throat> excuse me, that we are accompanied, that we are being heard and seen and felt and honored in this moment when the theme is for this week, time and time loops. And we have a song entitled Ever After. 
from an album called The Sands of Time. From the year 2008 by Peter Sterling. I'm sorry, Peter Sterling. This is the potential. This is the purpose of deepening your awareness of yourself and awareness, not just cognitive, but on a deep feeling basis. For as you transform and potentially transmute those patterns within, your ability to sense, receive, be in collaboration with and cooperation with your soul self, your wider self, your guides and teachers and masters and everything in and around you which bends itself, lends itself to your expansion of self-knowledge, self-connection. For as you feel yourself internally, you are so much more adept, or will be so much more adept at receiving, feeling, being open to. the information, the help, the guidance, the assistance, the constant affirmation and confirmation that you are not alone. You are not None of us are alone in this incredible experience. You are here purposefully. And the more you know, yourself, the more you are able to discover the universe within allowing you to be interconnected. to the universe without. And the energetics are deepening now. Nothing you need to do, nothing you need to focus on. Simply allow yourself to feel the hard edges of this particular reality. Becoming less defined, less 
physical. Feel the winds of time gently, gently blowing you down and into a wide sense of yourself. The more you are able to let go of perception or your mind's eye or your third eye, the more easily you are able to sink down and in feeling the softening, the fluidity. You are non physical. Self. Just feeling as the sands of time trickle down onto a pile of sand. Again, no need to vision on the contrary. That may interfere with your experience of your own internal time. Allowing the energetics to take you even one more level deeper. No work, no effort, no push, no intention, no goal. Simply allow. The more you let go of the need to see control the more you are able to experience not see, experience. Your eternal self.
simply feel, simply follow. Not again with your mind's eye or your viewing, but by sensing, feeling, experiencing. your internal world, internal universe. And the timelessness As you're able to do so, the fixed time of this reality falls away. And the desires and wishes for your future self can be Planted, placed, fixed into your internal, eternal design reality. so that it can be materialized, physicalized into this particular third dimensional reality. The deeper you experience your internal, internal self, the more clearly, deeply is implanted or created the reality in this time and space.
And much like the dream time, it may feel very etheric, very diffuse as far as a physical Once you have placed deeply into this foundational matrix, this universal wide web of consciousness, your desires, and wishes for your personal future. Allowing once again your energy field and your wider self to lead you and guide you in your own unique individual way that you need not know. But again, simply allowing and following your energy field and your wider self will bring you back to this Earth 3D reality. And you may experience that in between place where you are both physical and non physical. Oftentimes, people receive symbol, sound, shape, songs, stories, clues, guidance in this space. So that throughout the time after this practice, in a day or so following such a deep practice, you will be open to the physical correspondence of that piece of information. So let us say that you were gifted a particular image or reminder of a story or a book that you have read. Again, allowing the process of re-physicalization as I'm speaking. 
So let that include piece of information will show up in your world in the physical over the next 24 to 48 hours, oftentimes much more quickly. Validating, confirming, letting you feel how much you are cared for and how quickly and easily you can collaborate with your wider self and your guides and masters and teachers bringing you information. You don't have to know who they are. You don't have to have names for them. It is in the feeling and in the openness to the fluidity of time, space, and matter that will enable you to remember. who you are, what you're doing here at this particular very, very special, very, very exciting, very, very crucial time of this planet's evolutionary process. So as always, it is with profound gratitude for your presence on this planet, deep love and honor. And reminding you that every Friday at noon, there is a different process, a different practice, depending on the energetics and the collective consciousness theme. And as well, the upcoming solstice celebration ceremony on the 21st. And we'll be posting information here on Facebook, on um, my website. And please don't hesitate to call for more information about sessions that can help you discover more of your timeless universe within. So until next time, I bid you adieu. Please listen to this meditation practice over and over and over again, allowing yourself to fall into that timelessness of your eternal self. With love, gratitude, and honor, I bid you adieu.